الله أكبر الله أكبر سلام عليكم Peace be with you Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of Allah the entirely merciful the specially merciful My name is Ayub Karim and welcome to my channel Quran inspires me Let us begin with ayah 173 of surah 2 We read He referring to Allah he has only forbidden you dead meat and blood and flesh of the swine and that on which any other name has been invoked beside that of Allah. But if one is forced by necessity without willful disobedience nor transgressing due limits then he is guiltless for God is of forgiving most merciful. In this ayah as in other verses as well, Allah is informing us of what is not permissible. Any foods where any other name has been invoked beside Allah's name, then that food is haram for us to eat. For example, let's say I slaughter by reciting Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the food will be halal. Even if I just recited Bismillah and did the slaughter, the food will be halal. But if I say in the name of Jesus or in the name of Buddha or in the name of Abracadabra, then that food is not permissible for us to eat. It is haram because we invoke a name other than Allah's name. We believe that there are 99 attributes or names of Allah. And if we call upon or invoke any of these 99 attributes or names of Allah, the meat will be halal. Having said that, and depending whether you believe that or not, I have come to the conclusion that the whole Muslim world, the 2 billion Muslims worldwide are eating haram. What did you just say? You say what? What did he just say? What is this? Yes, I believe that the whole Muslim world is definitely eating haram meat. Are you, are you sure? Now, before you jump to conclusions, which is a habit of traditional Muslims without hearing the other side of the story, the Quran makes it absolutely clear that no other name has to be invoked beside Allah's name. If you agree with that, then we can continue with a rational discussion. If not, I suggest you switch off now. When we recite Bismillah, there is no problem. The food will be halal. But the moment we add Wallahu Akbar or Allahu Akbar, that is when we make the food haram. Because now we are invoking a name that is not an attribute of Allah. Oh my God! Who said this? Who? Oh, I don't know. Who? who says so? Allah says so. What is Allahu Akbar? Who is this God Akbar? According to the Quran, Allah gave us 99 of his attributes and Akbar is definitely not one of his attributes. Allah gave us the attribute Al-Kabir, meaning the great. Who changed Kabir to Akbar? There is no such phrase in the Quran that reads Allahu Akbar. If there is such a phrase in the Quran, will someone please show it to me? Even the greatest of ulama or the grandest of mufti will not be able to help you out with this one simply because there is no such phrase as Allahu Akbar in the Quran. So from where did the traditional Muslims get Allahu Akbar from? Everything about traditional Islam is upside down. Everything about traditional Islam goes against the Quran. That is why I left traditional Islam for Deen Allah. Listen to this. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar From where do they get Allahu Akbar? It is definitely not in the Quran and Akbar is definitely not an attribute of Allah. Listen again very carefully. Bismillah Allahu Akbar Bismillah Allahu Akbar Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Again, from where do they get Allahu Akbar? It is definitely not in the Quran. And although the word Akbar 
is found in the Quran, it is definitely not used as an attribute of Allah. Once again, listen and watch carefully. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. And again, from where do they get Allahu Akbar? It is definitely not in the Quran. And Akbar is definitely not an attribute of Allah. Allah uses the word Akbar in the comparative case of a noun or adjective. And never, never as one of his attributes. So, which God are these people calling to? Which God are they addressing? Definitely not Allah in the Quran. There is no such attribute of Allah that is Akbar. So, from where did these Muslims get this Akbar God from? We have 99 attributes of Allah. But it is quite clear that the traditional Muslims do not like and that they do not agree with what Allah gave us. So, they invented their own false attribute of Allah, which they say is Akbar. So, this is what Allah says to us. That is, if we really believe in Allah, we read in Surah 7, verses 71 and 72, they are but names that you have named, you and your ancestors, for which God has revealed no authority. They follow nothing but conjecture and their fantasies. Now the guidance from their Lord has come to them. Hence they have no excuses. And again we read in Surah 53 verse 23 These are nothing but names which you have devised you and your fathers for which God has sent down no authority. So Allah is telling us the reader of the Quran that these names are names that they devised they invented, they created, for which they have no authority. Yet the traditional Muslims brazenly went ahead and invented Akbar against the order of Allah. The traditional Muslims think they know better than Allah because the attribute for great is Kabir. And all the other attributes of Allah are in the nominative case in the Arabic language and not in the comparative cases, nor are they in the superlative cases. If Allah wanted us to address him in the superlative case, he most certainly would have revealed his attributes in the superlative case. And he would have instructed us to say Allahu Al-Akbar. That is the superlative case of Kabir. Al-Akbar means the greatest and Allahu Akbar means Allah is greater. Akbar means greater and not greatest according to the definition of the Quran. For example, we read in Surah 2, verse 219. Yes, alu naka, anil khamril wal maisiri. They ask thee concerning wine and gambling. Kul fi hima ismun kabir. What is the Arabic word? Kabir. Wa ma nafi'u lin nasi. In them is great sin and some profit for men. The Arabic word is Kabir. Kabir. Not Akbar. Here it is Kabir. Wa ismahuma Akbaru. Now we read the word Akbar. But the sin is Akbar. The sin is greater. Can you see the difference? So Akbar means greater. Now the traditional Muslims are making a comparison of Allah. To what they are comparing Allah, they themselves do not know. So when these traditional Muslims are saying, Allahu Akbar, even in the namaz, they give me a clear indication, these are people who do not know the Quran, let alone knowing the Quran. This shows that they don't even understand Surah Ikhlas. They recite, Lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. They recite it, but they do not believe in it. The essence is that they are saying that there is none comparable to Allah. And then they say Allahu Akbar, thereby making a comparison by using the comparative case Akbar. Does this make sense? But that is the so-called logic of traditional Islam. Traditional Muslims claim that Allahu Akbar can also mean Allah is the greatest. I appeal to you, do not play games with Allah. 
do not insult the intelligence of Allah. Allah's vocabulary is infinite. He knows and understands words. And nowhere in the Quran he uses the phrase Allahu Akbar. Dear brothers and sisters, I appeal to you, please do your homework. See if you can find where in the Quran does Allah refer to himself as Akbar or Allahu Akbar. Please check it out for yourself. Furthermore, my dear brothers and sisters, if you have not yet subscribed, I recommend that you do. I will also appreciate if you share, like and comment. Thank you. Now, traditional Muslims can make Akbar to mean anything they want. No problem. But the most simple and most conclusive argument is that Akbar is not an attribute of Allah that is given by Allah in the Quran. If you wish to stay within the parameters of the Quran, do not say Allahu Akbar, but say Allahu Kabir, meaning that Allah is great. Every time you say Allahu Akbar, you are calling a false god that your ancestors invented and you are promoting this falsehood. So, the whole Muslim world, the two billion Muslims worldwide, are calling on a false god called Akbar. There is no such thing as Allahu Akbar in the Quran. We have a lot to think about. Many of you will probably dismiss what I have to say, but those that are seriously concerned about the Akhirah will do due diligence and check what I am saying. So every time we slaughter meat in the name of Akbar, are we eating halal meat or haram? Until my next video, I am Ayub Karim from Quran Inspires Me. Understand the Quran to experience the revelation. Salamun alaikum. Peace be with you.